Only a little sketchy, right? One battery, seven volts, oof. Let's see if we can fix that. Come on. Let's see if she'll start. Come on, baby. All right, let's try it again with the uh, big boy snapping charger. Not gonna break out the 7.3 nose candy just yet. Let's put her on engine start, give her all the juices. Come on, Betsy. Oh, that's even worse. All right, let's try snap on scanner. Borrowed battery. I think that one yeet its last haul. Let's see what happens. Like a champ. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining in. As you can see, I got some 6.0 content coming at you. I know you guys are big fans of that, but before we get too far into that, I wanna to talk to you guys about Frank Built Performance, my other business where I sell diesel parts and accessories for your Cummins, Duramax, Power Stroke, diesel pickup trucks, and let you guys know that the website, frankbuiltperformance.com is live. You guys can go on there, check out all the products I'm, we got. Um, you can order anything. If you guys don't see what you're looking for, don't worry. I'm uploading new products every day. Um, and if you need something, shoot me an email, sales at frankbuiltperformance.com, or you can hit me up on any of my social media platforms. If I don't have it on the website, chances are I can still get it for you. But yeah, guys, check it out, frankbuiltperformance.com. I'm gonna have apparel coming up soon, uh, shirts, hats, you know, the normal things, stickers, all that. So just bear with me. Um, just super stoked, we got the website going, so. Yeah, guys, check it out, frankbuiltperformance.com for all your diesel, Cummins, Duramax, Power Stroke, pickup parts, accessories, whatever you need, I got you covered. So with that out of the way, let's get to the video. So first off, I want to explain to you guys what we got here. This is a 2003 Ford Excursion. Obviously, it's got the 6.0 Power Stroke. Obviously, it's got issues. But you know what? That's the only way I buy these trucks is when they got issues. Now, the reason I picked this up, one, it was a tremendously good deal. Literally couldn't pass it up. And two, I really need something that can tow the Mega. And uh, the way I see it, I don't need a gooseneck. I don't have a gooseneck. I just have a bumper pull. And for now, this will be a great uh, family hauler, especially when we're going to events. We need uh, multiple people. We don't have to bring multiple vehicles because these, because these do have the third row or they at least should. There should be another row of seats back there, which this doesn't have. So of course, with the price that I paid for it, I'm not gonna disclose that, but let me tell you, I just gotta, I basically stole this truck. And you guys can see it does run, it does drive in some sense. Um, but we got some issues. Check out that uh, stance we got going on. So we do, we definitely have some suspension issues. You guys can see the engine. That's what we're gonna start tackling today is this engine area. Um, but yeah, otherwise, overall, it's a clean truck. Uh, we got different wheels and tires for it, obviously. We're going to do some exterior maintenance, I guess you could say, or re revitalizations. Show you guys the interior. 
it's actually pretty decently clean i mean for what it is again we're missing the uh full size or again we're missing the third row so that kind of sucks So the front seats, uh, they are, they've seen better days. Both the uh, bolsters are pretty tore up, so we'll have to get that fixed or replaced. Uh, we do have a doubled-in stereo, so that's neat. We got the auto AC, which I'm a big fan of. Just makes everything easier. And of course, being an excursion, it's got rear AC. We got the vents up top. And uh, you can see we're missing some plastics and whatnot. The old owner, um, when I got it, it wasn't running, and when he was trying to get it running before selling it he just started tearing things apart or whatever so not a big deal you can see a little damage done to this uh turn signal thing but overall not too bad Let's see if we can get the mileage i forgot how many miles are on it 348,000 miles so you know she's just broken in just barely broken in it's a diesel you know they don't they don't break into at least 150,000 200 miles so yeah you got the uh, upgraded later style mirrors you know so it's got some good mod modifications done to it but yeah it's even got this pretty sweet light bar with the uh, custom yellow lens and you know those 20 dollar lights down there but uh that'll all get taken care of in the near future of course so anyway moving on to what we're going to be working on today now with this project i could either do the normal thing i do with these six o's which is go balls out put a new motor in it new injectors new everything and have a solid motor no problem but honestly that doesn't sound like it would make good content and it kind of sounds boring so and we already did that with the other one you guys seen that now I think what we're going to do is I want to try living the, what I say, like the normal 6.0 life. I want to see if we could live a cheap 6.0 ownership. And I know cheap is relative to everyone, but basically I want to see what we could do with this using cheaper parts or, you know, see what we could do to save money every step of the way uh, without going full balls to the wall. And what I mean by cheaping out, I don't mean putting just crap products in and hoping for the best. I mean, I want to see if I can find some budget-minded parts that'll save you money in the long term and see if we can find some, you know, deals and diamonds in the rough. That way, I can pass those savings on to you guys. Or I find out that you can't cheap out on something, and guess what? It doesn't cost you guys anything. You get to watch me fumble, and we all have fun. So, so looking under the engine bay, you guys can see right away that we need at least a new radiator. Um, the reason this radiator failed, though, is we have a ruptured oil cooler so it was basically over pressurizing the whole system um you guys can see there's just a whole bunch of leak from where the degas bottle was i took it off because i had to steal that ficum for uh testing on another truck but anyways that oil cooler or that uh degas bottle was full of oil which it shouldn't be it should be full of coolant uh so yeah that's the what we're basically going to tackle today is we're going to get to that oil cooler which if you guys don't know is down there and we're going to address a lot of the other issues that we have of course you guys seen we need to do uh, something about this battery cable situation but i think that'll come at a later time right now my main goal is let's get to that oil cooler and let's get this thing basically running in a actual state like right now it runs but i mean where the coolant's good but I mean to a point where we could actually run it and drive it. Uh, obviously these worm gear hose clamps on the boost pipes are not gonna do it. So guys, this is what we got to remedy this current situation. And now all these parts with the exception of the hotshot stiction eliminator and the 1-800 radiator that I got are all available on my website. Uh, I'm gonna have Motocraft parts all in there. We got this bulletproof diesel EGR cooler, some PPE products, power driven diesel boot kit. Uh, so all good products, but all affordable products like this power driven diesel boot kit, super affordable. They make a nice kit. Um, the only thing I've so far noticed is 
I believe the turbo elbow one, which is missing, I, I'm waiting for it to come in. I, I had to use it on another truck, but the clamps they give you for that one didn't seem to fit right, but uh, I'll get some new clamps coming to remedy that. Uh, bulletproof diesel EGR cooler. The only EGR coolers I run in these 6.0s, I've tried other brands and have had them fail, even the ones that are bulletproof. Um, they're not. So the only ones I had zero failure on are these bulletproof diesel ones. And this is actually a used one. This came off of a, one of my old trucks. Came off something, but I have it. We're gonna use it again. This is the uh, cheap excursion build. I got a later model intake manifold, which I'll explain more when we get the, uh, the intake off of this truck, why I have that. Of course, got a new radiator. Again, 1-800 radiator, just cheapo. We got a whole host of motocraft parts and looks like I dumped coolant all over it. That's cool. But again, guys, I'll have a full line of motocraft parts on the website. Um, oil filters, fuel filters, all these parts that you're seeing here. Basically, again, all these parts will be available on the website if they're not already. So yeah, without further ado, I'm going to get you guys set up on the tripod. I'm going to get this thing torn down and I'll, get, I'll dive more into the parts as we start using them. I just wanted to give you guys a brief overlook of what we're using. But yeah, get you on the tripod. Let's get working. Man, that is pretty nasty in there. Tell you what. I am pretty stoked about this uh, donut O-ring though. As you can see, um, other than the rust color because it's full of uh, rusty water, the O-ring is intact. What you'll find is if you have fuel in your cooling system, say injector cups have failed, this O-ring uh, will actually be eaten up. It'll look like a rat's been chewing on it on the inside here. So I was kind of worried, you know, hoping that the cups are okay. I mean, they could still be bad, of course, but this at least tells me most likely we're all right. And uh, you guys seen I hit this with some compressed air before I pulled the uh, intake off to try to mitigate anything getting inside, but we'll also vacuum up everything before we go back together. Before we get this oil cooler out, what I'm going to do is take that H-pop cover off. We got to take the uh, IPR out, the ICP sensor. We'll get those all taken out, cleaned up, re-o-ringed, uh, reseal the IPR. I also want to reseal the H-pop. And the reason I want to pull the H-pop first is it'll allow the oil cooler reservoir to drain so I don't take this oil cooler off and get a whole bunch of oil dumping everywhere. Not a big deal either way, but try to keep the messes down to a minimum. I just want to take a quick second to show you one of the updates that I'm doing. I told you guys how the uh, we're doing the later style intake manifold, and you can see what it is, is that hump in the back that the O3s have that the later models don't. Also, we're going to change out the 
intake elbow from this style that had this valve, which was an updated part from Ford. They got rid of that valve. Um, we're just gonna clean all that up with just a later style intake elbow. So reason I wanna update to this intake manifold is because with this hump in the way, you're not gonna be able to get the H-pop cover out without pulling the intake. It also makes servicing either the IPR or the ICP sensor virtually impossible. Um, so those few reasons, since I have a stash of these intakes, it's a no brainer to go ahead and update. Another thing you can see is that our old EGR cooler is a round style where the new one's gonna be a square style. And you can see that the new one is slightly longer so what that means is i'm gonna have to change the up pipe because you can see how it extends out uh the later style up up pipes the egr port is further back obviously to accommodate the square egr cooler um the length of it also you can see somebody's welded this up in the past and it's full of rusty metal so that's pretty sweet it is a 03 so it's got the super loud super cool 60 10 blade whistle even has the early style um, turbo pedestal which is what i'm going to do to make my life easier in the future i'm going to go ahead and cut this off we're not going to use the rear bolts we're just going to run the front two works fine every time i've done it if you want to do it do it and if not i'm not telling you to do it other thing, of course, got to take these four Torx bolts out. And this is where you do the uh, blue spring mod. I don't know if we'll get to that in this video, but we will get to it. So to get the H-pop cover off, just a couple eight millimeter bolts. Oil cooler, just a couple 10 mil bolts down here at the base. Just gonna go ahead and get that knocked out. And then I'll get you guys back on uh, afterwards. And just like that, we got everything out, even the uh, radiator. The trans cooler lines kind of fought me, but whatever. A little bit of rust, never hurt nobody. Quick shout out to that uh, post turbo EGT sensor. Being that one kid in the group project that was uh, there, but never did anything. But yeah, you guys can see how uh, how much of a mess this oil cooler made. It was all definitely leaking too. Look at that screen. Definitely seen better days. This thing's definitely gotten hot. You can tell um by how this was originally black but you see how it's kind of like a brown color now that just tells you that this oil got really really hot which makes sense considering the uh, oil cooler was ruptured we're gonna go ahead and get this off there's a quick disconnect back there you just need one of these fancy dancy tools to get that off um we'll go ahead and reseal that we got new seals for that but yeah i guess uh we'll go ahead and start getting the oil cooler torn down you guys can see, I don't know if you can see the color. Come on, focus up. This is kind of the brownish color to this oil filter standpipe. And check this out. This is actually, I haven't seen this in a long, long time. Probably only one time before the oil feed for the turbo. is actually a quick connect, which obviously they did away with. So that means, so that means this is a, uh, really really early build 03 truck like probably first couple months of production it's got literally all the old 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 things that they really updated i mean they updated this must have been real early in 03 because i've never really come across that so yeah now all we got to do is we got these torx bits we got to take off we'll take the top off we'll get this off the uh oil or the cooling outlet and we'll get the oil cooler out so i'll get you guys on the uh tripod here and we'll get that thing knocked out so to get this oil cooler torn apart you're going to need a uh, t27 torx t45 torx 13 millimeter a mini pry bar and a 21 mil socket and a uh, oil pressure sensor socket i forget what size it is Look at that forbidden chocolate milk right there. Gross. 
So now in here, you're gonna have two 13 mil nuts. Blast those off. And then underneath here, you're gonna have two 13 mil bolts. And now you see how I got it set up on uh, two wood blocks. You could use two by fours. These are four by sixes or something like that. And now what you wanna do is take your 21 mil socket and you wanna beat down on these water outlets. Reason why you wanna use a socket and you don't wanna just bang on the hammers, you don't wanna mushroom this out and then you won't be able to get it past the uh, oil cooler housing. And you guys see how I just work my way back and forth, evenly get it out. So we're going to go ahead and get all these O-rings out, get this all thrown in the pulse washer. Yeah, you can just see this is a, uh, she yeed her last haul for sure. I went ahead and tore apart the uh, fuel filter regulator housing. Um, actually already has a blue spring, but we'll go ahead and at least reseal up all these gaskets, new O-rings for the uh, feed and return, all that good stuff. Otherwise, we're gonna go ahead and just get everything kind of ready to get cleaned up and then shoot it in the parts washer. That way it's all squeaky clean when we're ready to go back together. All right, so I went ahead and cleaned up the uh, EGR valve as well. Got new uh, new gasket kit coming. Just a little bit of brake clean and uh, wire wheel. Got it all looking brand new. Uh, got a pile of junk basically because of uh, this turbo feed line that I was talking to you guys about earlier uh, I'm gonna have to change this uh, oil filter housing to the uh, later style because there's no way to run a later style feed to the turbo which you want to do you see how that's crimped there yeah that's gonna cause a problem feeding oil to your turbo so they uh, Ford updated that in like 05 or 06 to a all-metal line so in order to use that, I'm gonna have to change out this, uh, this housing. H-pop looks good. Um, I actually replaced this H-pop. I worked on this truck, I just remembered, uh, years and years ago, like five, six years ago, and put this H-pop in here. Uh, so I know it's a OEM, well, at least if it's the same one, which the customer or the, uh, the previous owner said it was. Um, it is a Motocraft OEM pump you know the snap ring looks fine the little check ball here is not popping out or nothing so i'm just gonna go ahead and we're gonna take the risk and run it this is the uh cheap 6.0 build after all so and guys as far as this harness that has definitely seen better days when we go eventually and do a whole new motor build and everything in this we will update the harness but as of right now, it runs, it drives, and again, we gotta keep with the cheap theme. I'm not gonna put a harness in it just yet. All right guys, so I'm gonna wrap the video up here. Feel like we got everything done that we needed to do today. The couple extra parts that we're gonna need, um, we'll get over this week, like the up pipes and whatnot. The next video, obviously there's gonna be a multiple part series, uh, resurrecting this old thing, and even just doing this job because even like the coolant flush by itself is going to be a whole mission. So next video, we're going to go ahead and get the valve covers torn down. We're going to get the injectors out because I'm going to want to reseal those um, with the heat that I've seen, uh, the browning on the plastics on the oil system. I uh, definitely don't want a chance having a uh, injector seal blow out on the oil side. So, and guys, because I know I'm going to get asked this, um, reason I'm not going to use a air style or external oil cooler uh there's a couple mar people that make them on the market i've just never had good luck with them i've installed them on a few trucks i've had them on a few trucks and in the vegas heat it just seems like they don't keep up maybe that was just my experience but um i found the liquid to liquid cooling has always been much more efficient and as long as you install these new oil coolers properly i haven't seen too many failures as far as repeat failures on these oil coolers um yes i've had to warranty a cooler or two it is what it is but as long as you flush everything out properly you won't have an issue so that's the route i'm going it's my truck 
you do what you want on yours um but otherwise guys shoot me in the comments let me know what you think of the new build let me know what you think we should do with it and uh any ideas you guys have any comments questions concerns as always leave them down in the comments if you guys haven't already please like this video it really helps me out on the youtube thing and guys if you aren't already you gotta subscribe stay tuned i know you guys like the 6-0 content that's always what does good on this channel so that's why i'm bringing back some 6-0 content and this one it's actually going to stick around a little longer than the uh, last ones have. So, and guys, and guys, if you get, need any diesel parts for your Cummins Power Stroke Duramax pickup truck, Frank Built Performance, I'll have the link down below. Let me know if you don't, don't see what you're looking for. Again, hit me up on social media here, wherever, uh, or email sales at frankbuiltperformance.com. And if I don't have it on the website, I can most likely get it. So yeah, guys, with that all said and done, we'll see you next time.